comedian don't boil and I'm quitting alcohol. So my wife left this morning. It was fucking touch and go though. There's so many fucking hurdles you need to overcome just to leave a country now that it's almost not even worth leaving half the time. So my wife had everything sorted. All the fucking certificates, all the fucking tests, everything. So we get to the airport. She goes inside. You're not allowed into Indian airports unless you've got a fucking ticket. So we're just watching her through the glass. She goes in. She goes up to the counter. And then she's at the counter for like fucking 15 minutes. There's papers flying everywhere. There's arms flailing. There's people crowding. It looks like fucking chaos in there. So I'm watching and I'm like, of course something's going to fuck up. Of course, it makes sense. Why wouldn't it fuck up? So she calls up and she's like, they're not letting me on board without a rapid antigen test. And I'm like, you've got one in your bag, just fucking do that. And she's like, no, you've got to do a fucking airport approved rapid antigen test. And of course that costs like 80 fucking Australian dollars. And it's a little bit risky too, because my wife did the fucking main test, the PTCTR test, whatever the fuck it's called. She did that a couple of days ago, so the COVID could have snuck in in the last couple of days because we have been going out quite a bit. So she has to leave the fucking airport. The Emirates ladies are with her. We walk up to the rapid antigen test place, and the fucking line is a mile long. But the Emirates people cut us in line. We get to the front of the line, and they said the test takes 40 minutes. So it's 9 a.m., and the gate shuts at 9.30 a.m., She's like, how the fuck am I going to get this flight? I need the test result before I even check my bags in. They're like, we'll see what we can do. And when they say 40 minutes in India, they generally mean sometime that day. So now we've got like 40 minutes of just nail biting waiting. For starters, we don't know if the test result's going to come back in time. And then on top of that, we don't know if it's going to be fucking negative. If either one of those fuck up, then there's no catching a flight. So we're just waiting. I am stressed the fuck out. My wife's stressed the fuck out. And then I'm like, what the fuck is this test about? Like, you got all the shit. She's like, yeah, I know. They said because I'm leaving the airport in Dubai, I have to get the rapid antigen test. Otherwise, I'm not allowed to leave the airport in Dubai. I'm like, yeah, so don't leave the fucking airport in Dubai. I'm like, you're rolling the dice on this dodgy fucking rapid antigen test. That could cost us fucking two years because you don't want to sit at Dubai airport for fucking 14 hours. Just sit at the fucking airport for 14 hours. What the fuck is going on? She was not happy about that. She was not happy at all. But seriously, if that was me, I'd be like, what? Fucking rapid antigen test. Fuck that. I just won't leave. I could have picked up fucking COVID somewhere along the way. I could have picked it up in the line to the fucking rapid antigen test. It was a fucking risky decision to make to fucking look at some sand and some Arabs with towels. But anyway, 9.27 a.m., three minutes before the fucking gates close, the result comes in, negative. She goes up to the counter. They need a fucking printout. (laughs) Just another fucking thing. So she runs off, gets a printout. Fucking, it's all sorted. She goes through the gate. She catches the plane. And she called just before she's in Dubai and she's fucking hammered. She smashed like a bottle of wine on the plane. She wasn't really making a lot of sense. She kept on talking about the Tiger Woods documentary. I'm like, how many wines did you have? So that's phase one of her journey done. She just needs to make it to Australia now before the 15th. She's got like two weeks. So there's a little bit of fucking breathing room if something really fucks up. But that brings me to me. Here, alone, in India. Two kids, my wife's parents. There's not a lot going on here for the Le Boyal. It actually feels really fucking weird at the moment. Hopefully it's only going to be a few weeks, but it definitely feels like the end of an era. The Indian apocalypse era, I suppose you could call it. It's winding up. It's been winding up for the last month, but it's really fucking winding up now. I don't know what the fuck I'm going to do for the next three weeks. My brother-in-law rolled me a few hash joints. So I've got three hash joints in my GoPro case. And he also left me half a gram of MDMA as well. So I'm going to have to do that before I leave. But I don't know when or how. I'm not doing it in the bedroom by myself sending people messages on Instagram. 
That's for fucking sure. Maybe I'll head into town on Saturday night or something. I don't know how that's going to work. I'm just going to go to a bar by myself on MDMA, sit at the bar and not order any drinks. Just sit there drinking water with my fucking jaw swinging. (laughs) Would you like a drink, sir? Nah, nah. I quit drinking. He said the MD's not that good anyway, but that could be my going away party. It's not the same though when you're not drinking. When I went to a gig one Saturday night, it was when my lung was fucking collapsed. I finished the gig early. I was like, oh, I'm just going to cruise around the streets, have a look what's going on, maybe jump into some bars. Like it was one of those vibes where all you needed to do was start drinking and some fun shit would have started happening. Like you can loan soldier if you're drinking. You just pick up other fucking drinkers along the way and start a party. But it's very hard to do when you're not drinking and you're by yourself. There's nothing you can do. So I just walked and had a few darts and then I was like, fuck, well, I guess I'll go home. Anyway, we'll see how all that goes. But yeah, feels like it's the end of an era. It's a little bit fucking depressing, actually. Anyway, that'll do for tonight. If you're enjoying the podcast, give it a share around with your friends and I'll see you the fuck later.